Hi, this is Jeff Challen. In this screencast, we're going to talk a little bit about Android's concept of an activity. Android has some of its own terminology for referring to things. This is not that unusual. Um, and in Android, an activity, you can think of an activity as a screen. So a screen in Android um, corresponds to something that the user sees. So here is my emulator. Here is, um, you know, my app. And this is one activity. So the activity encompasses uh, this image space where the images and the composites and the results of your transformations are, are shown. And it also uh, encompasses all these buttons at the bottom that do various things like change the background, apply your transformations, load images from a file, save things, etc. And the activity that we've provided um, is the, the code in here is largely responsible for two things. So the first thing is setting up the UI. And there's a fair amount of work that's done in this function. So this is a function called onCreate. Uh, now that we know a little bit about inheritance, you can uh, understand what's happening here. So I'm extending a class called AppCompatActivity. Uh, that's common for Android applications for a particular activity or particular screen. And one of the methods that I can override that I inherit is something called onCreate. And onCreate is called when my application, when this activity, this screen is shown. And I can, this allows me to save some state. We're not going to necessarily use that feature in this application. Um, and so the code in here is run when the, you can think of it as when the screen is shown or when the app starts up. So one of the things it does is it loads a particular layout for the screen that uh, says, okay, here's where the buttons go. Here's where other things go. Um, and it does a bunch of initialization here. And one of the, the big pieces of initialization that, that consumes a lot of this, and there probably are better ways to do this that would use more, more complicated Java idioms, but we just decided to do it in a simple way, is setting up what the buttons are going to do, right? So it sets up what the buttons are going to do. And then it includes various pieces of code that either start or receive the result of different types of requests that you might make in the application. And so you'll see functions on the activity that are called start take photo, start download file, um, start open file. One of the reasons why these, these functions say start is that the way that these uh, actually work is the activity does a little bit of work when you push a button and then it hands off um, the rest of the task to either a background task, which we'll talk about later, or to another um, activity on Android. So there are cases where, for example, on Android, I can use my app to launch the camera application. So what's actually happened here is that the camera application is now running and, you know, I'm interacting with it. And this is just the standard Android uh, camera application. Um, and I can take a picture, you know, I can save it. And now it's composited with the rest of my app. And so what happened here is that uh, I, there were two steps. So the first thing is the activity ran this this um, function called start taking photo. And if I turned on the logging, you could see um, if I put some log messages, these are just warnings because this indicates that something went wrong. Um, but essentially what I do here is I tell Android, hey, I want you to start the camera. And when you're done, here's where I want you to put the file if the user takes a picture. When that finishes, there's another uh, function that gets run down here. It's kind of in order on activity results. So this is another thing that we're overriding where my one of my ancestors provides this, but I'm going to override it. And this is so you can think of these uh, activities as having two phases. First, I ask the camera to take a photo and then the camera has to have a way to notify me when it's finished. And so what it does is it runs this function and this function is actually run when the request to um, take a photo finishes, it's run when the request to open a file finishes. Since you'll see again, when I open, when I request to open a file, what's happening is it's loading the file picker dialog. This is something that's provided by Android. So if I go back, I've come back to my application, but what happens is for a minute there, my app stops running, another Android application starts to run, and I need a way to know that that other application is finished doing what I asked it to do. Either take a photo, um, have the user pick a file, and there's a variety of different types of ways you can do this on Android. This is a pretty common app design pattern. So that's the, that's the sort of main concept of an activity. What we've tried to do here as much as possible while 
reducing the number of files is keep a lot of the, the heavy lifting done in this tasks uh, file. There is one of the things that is done in our activity, and you're welcome to sort of go through this code if you want, is we, the, the, it is responsible for drawing the, the pictures on the canvas. So the code right here um, in set foreground bitmap takes the foreground bitmap, oops, sorry, um, which is whatever photo you've loaded, and it composites it on top of the background image. Um, and this is what allows things like the green screen feature to work, which is not going to work that well here. But hey, you can see that there's a little, there was a little bit of green on that um, monitor. And so now that little bit of green is poking through. Um, and the other bits of transparency are there as well. We'll have a separate screencast where we'll talk about the other main file in the Android application, which is the tasks file, a little bit about what's going on there. Um, keep in mind on MP4, there's a lot here. It's all new. Our goal here is not that you understand everything about what's happening, but that you start to see some patterns. You start to see some idioms about how things are done in Android. So for the example, this idea of having a handler for a button event. When a button is clicked, the app does something. So there's a very standard way of doing that on Android. The idea of being able to ask another part of the system to do something for me, take a photo, uh, open a file. When you build Android apps, what you'll spend a lot of time doing is looking around, at either at our code or finding code online that does something similar and kind of trying to modify the things you find to meet your own needs. Um, so, you know, don't try to figure out how to do this stuff from scratch, find good examples online, understand how they work, modify them, bring them into your, uh, your application. Um, this is something that all uh, working programmers do. Uh, you know, nobody really tries to approach these things from scratch. Instead, they find uh, things that are similar to what they want to do, figure out how to modify them so they work, and incorporate those new components into their own application.